What's up guys, welcome back to DCS World and welcome back aboard the A10C Warthog for another tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the Joint Directed Attack Munition, also known as the JDAM. Uh, in the A10 it also can go by the name of IAM, which stands for Inertially Aided Munition, but most folks will know it as the JDAM, and uh, that's what we'll be referring to it as such. So we've got a few different flavors of JDAM. If I look at the armament screen real quick, we have the GBU-38. This is a 500-pound uh, JDAM. We also have the GBU-31. This is a 2,000-pound JDAM. And then there is the GBU-31 V3 slash B which is essentially a 2,000 pound bunker buster JDAM. Penetration warhead, it's got a shape charge in the front. Um, I don't use it that much, but it is useful if your strike target is something like a bunker or a uh, fortification that you need some penetration for. Now, what is the JDAM? Well, the JDAM, Joint Directed Attack Munition, is a GPS slash INS guided precision bomb. Okay, what that means is that the JDAM itself has a guidance kit that downloads GPS coordinate information to it when we go to drop the bomb, and it will use that information to guide itself to those coordinates very, very accurately. What this also means is that it is a fire and forget weapon. Unlike our previous video where we explored laser guided bombs, Laser guided bombs can be very accurate, but they also require us to hang around and fire our laser to guide that bomb on target. We don't have to do any such thing with the JDAM. All we have to do is get our launch parameters correct, get a proper target locked up, and drop it, and then we can run away. It is completely fire and forget. Uh, however, we do need to do a few things in order to do that, so we're going to need our targeting pod... Uh, and that's really about it. Uh, once we get in the air, we'll talk a little bit more about how to use these weapons. So stand by while I get over to our target area. All right, so we're in the air now. We're hovering near our target area as usual. A few more notes about the JDAM. Uh, we do need to make sure that the JDAMs themselves are aligned. Uh, each of these weapons has their own INS built into it, and it does require a certain amount of alignment. Uh, you'll know it's aligned if you go over and look at your DSMS, and you see on each of the stations where you have either a GBU-31 or a 38, you just see the letters RDY that stand for ready, uh, and you should be good to go. Uh, one other note that I forgot to mention on the ground is you can only carry the JDAM on stations 3, 4, 5, seven eight and nine the reason for that is those stations are the only stations that are set up to receive fully smart munitions that is the gps and ins guided munitions uh, and the same will apply for when we look at the cbu 103 and 105 in a later video now while we're looking at the dsms a couple of things uh, as usual we want to make sure our master arm is set to arm we want to make sure our targeting pod is on and warmed up mine already is Oops, excuse me and let's just take a look at our profiles real quick let us select we're gonna drop the GBU 38s first so let's look at view profile now here's the fun thing about JDAMs there is literally nothing that ever will need to be changed in the profile pages for these systems for these weapons that is they are locked to nose and tail fuse. They are locked to CCRP, and in fact, they get a special flavor of CCRP symbology, which we'll show you guys in a minute. Go to change settings. The only setting we have is a minimum altitude, which we're not gonna worry about right now. And that's literally it. You don't have to change anything just about in the DSMS for JDAM. So it makes them a lot easier once you understand that fact. Very, very easy weapon to use. Let's unpause the camera over here and look over here. I mentioned we needed our targeting pod. Make sure it's on, warmed up, and in air-to-ground mode. 
We're going to make it our soy with coolie right long. And I've already got it pointed at some targets over here. So let's zoom in and I'm actually at a weird angle to get a point track, but as long as I get the as long as I get the crosshairs more or less on that target, should be good. Now we need to create a spee. As with all of our guided munitions, a spee is important, so we're gonna go TMS forward long to create the spee. Zoom back out, unpause the camera, and we know we have a spee with our TGP because we see TGP in the lower left portion of the HUD. Now here's the really nice thing about the JDAMs. I'm actually getting a little far away from the target area, but that's fine because the JDAMs, because they are GPS guided, they can actually glide themselves a pretty good distance. A uh, little bit gimped in the A-10 as compared to something like the Hornet, which can also engage JDAMs, uh, but uh, you can still get a fair bit more distance out of the JDAM. It will glide a fair ways. And remember, as I mentioned, they are completely fire and forget. So let's make our HUD soy. Let's gonna let's select our GBU 38s here first. So we see GBU 38 is highlighted. We see GBU 38 on the HUD. We see our azimuth steering line as we turn towards our target. and all is well. Quick pause just to talk about a little bit of symbology on the HUD. Let me zoom in and hold the camera still. All right, so we see our CCRP symbology for the JDAMs. Now it's a little bit different from the laser guided bombs that we explored in the last video. What we have here is instead of a bomb fall line and a solution queue, we actually have a circular reticle with a couple of carrots. These little triangles here are called carrots. We have a minimum range carrot, which is this guy here, and we have a maximum range carrot, which is this guy here. And then once we are within a certain minimum and maximum range, when we're within that range, we have a bit of a range circle that's going to start unwinding from the inside of this circle here. It's actually parked at the top right here, this little line drooping down towards the center. That is the actual range indication. And when that line gets in between these two triangles, that is our indication to know that we are in range to drop the weapon. And we can basically guarantee that it will hit at that time. If we try to drop it before it's in minimum range or maximum range, or we're outside of range entirely, we will, get, we will get an error, we'll have all sorts of problems. Another thing I should mention, as with all weapons, really all weapons on the A-10C, when we're going to drop them, you press and hold the weapon release button until the bomb comes off the rail. And it's especially important with the JDAMs because if you press and hold the bomb, or the weapon release button, the bomb will come off just fine. But if you only tap the weapon release button, you may run into an issue called IAM launch abort, which essentially means that JDAM has become a dud. And the reason for that is the act of pressing and holding the weapon release button when you're using JDAMs triggers the system to actually download the coordinate information to the JDAM and then drop it all in one button press. But that's accomplished by holding the button. So we need to make sure we hold the weapon release button down until the bomb comes off the rail. I cannot stress that enough. If you get an IAM launch abort error message on your MFDs, that means that that bomb has become a dud. Uh, it's officially known as a hung store, and that bomb can no longer be used. It's, eventually, it's essentially useless. You've essentially broken the computer on that bomb. And the only way to get rid of it would be to actually just jettison it uh, with the selective jettison function. Uh, which we're not going to try to worry about now. We're going to try to get a successful bomb drop. So let's unpause the camera, get ourselves situated. We're aiming towards the target here. So let me unpause. Good altitude to do this from. I would like to say about a minimum of 15,000 feet. Uh, you can get as high as you want. The higher, the better. Uh, the higher you go and the faster you go, the more range you'll have and the more minimum and maximum range you have. 
Now, if you look, you can actually see those triangles moving around a little bit. It's actively calculating the minimum and maximum range that we have. And once we're in range, you'll see the symbology start to move around a little bit. So we're just about coming up on maximum range now. We'll know we're at maximum range when the inner circle starts unwinding. And there it is. We're in range. Quick pause. You see the thing that started to unwind there? It is in between these two triangles. Okay. This means we are cleared to release, and we also have a man release cue here. So we are good to go. So, unpause. Press and hold weapon release. Bomb is away. And because this is a fire and forget weapon, we can now turn away, run away from the threat. And the bomb will do its thing all on its own. I'll just level out here. We also have time to impact on the TGP, which is nice. Five seconds to impact. Get that out a little bit. We're going to see this bomb hit. Any second now. There it is. Boom. Very accurate. Hit him right on the head. Really easy to use. You basically lock up your speed, make sure your weapons are aligned, and you drop them and run away. JDAMs are super easy and super useful. Now, uh, let's do something a little bit different here. Um, I've got also two GBU-31s on the, on the plane. We are going to drop two of them in one pass. So the way we do that, we gain ourselves a little bit of distance. I'm going to get a speed set up on these targets here. Let me go into FLIR mode so it's easier to see. I'm going to get an area track in between these four targets. So look at the TGP there. See those four targets? Uh, it's occluded right now. Warning, autopilot. Let me just get that into view. There they are. I've created a SPI there. I'm going to get some distance. Turn around. I want to be, you know, 10 to 12 miles away for an attack run like this. And the trick here is going to be quick use of the TGP. So for this case, we want to keep our TGP as soy. So make sure we've got the green box around the TGP screen. And then once we drop one weapon, we're going to quickly slew our TGP over to another target lock it up as a speed, and then drop a second weapon while we are still in range. So because we have a minimum and a maximum range, we actually have a window for which we can lock up a new target and drop a bomb and it will still hit. It's not a single pass over uh, similarly to the laser guided bomb. That's another reason why JDAMs are so powerful is you can destroy multiple targets on a single run fairly efficiently and fairly easily. And I even have a future video on how to do this using a system called Mark Points, which will make dropping, you know, up to, let's say, four or even six JDAMs in a single run very, very easy. But uh, for now, just using the TGP to quickly lock another target up will work well for us. All right, we're at 12 miles, so I'm going to turn around now. going to turn sharply here to get it uh, lined up quickly. All right, so we've already locked up that target as our SPI. Now that that target is our SPI, we can drop a bomb on it. I'm actually just going to zoom the TGP out a bit so that we have a little bit of room to play here. 
set myself up, get the autopilot on so that we're flying nice and heads down. As soon as we drop this bomb, I'm going to immediately slew the TGP over to the left and drop another bomb on that other group of targets. Also, real quick, make the HUD soy. And let's switch to our GBU-31 profile. So we have our GBU-31 selected there. Make our TGP soy again and get ready for this attack run. So we see the minimum and maximum range carrots moving around in the HUD again. Quick cross check, everything looks good. We've got our GBUs selected. Speed is set. Our minimum and maximum ranges are calculating normally. Seven miles from target. Now you do need some quick fingers for this, so doing multiple drops is going to take a bit of practice, so this is a little bit advanced. As soon as we're in maximum range, I'm going to drop the first one. There it is, man release, press and hold, one away, slew over. New speed created, slight adjustment, still in range, press and hold. And that's second bomb away. Now let's watch these bombs fall. This is what the JDAM looks like. It is literally a Mark 82 or a Mark 84 in this case that's had some tail fins and a guidance kit added to it. So that gives it the unique smart bomb characteristics. And you see it's actually gliding fairly shallow. I'm going to watch that one fall. Boom, and then the other one should hit right about there. Boom. Really, really powerful and really, really easy to use. So guys, I hope you like that. Get up in the air and practice using your JDAMs. Uh, practice using all your weapons, obviously, but uh, JDAMs for now. And uh, I hope to see you guys for the next video. Until then, take care.